I can feel a moment in time coming on. Yeah, these days we hear a lot about environmental groups uh, targeting the Japanese whale hunters in the Southern Ocean. Mm. Well, 31 years ago, they were targeting the Australian whaling industry. The spectacular coastline of Albany in Western Australia has long been a draw card for tourists. But 30 years ago, the town attracted international attention for a very different reason. When David from Port Macquarie emailed asking, when did whaling end in Australia, we spoke to Chris Pash, a cadet reporter with the Albany Advertiser, back in 1977. Every boy at school wanted to be a whaler because they were big, tough guys and they earned big money and it was a wonderful adventure. Uh, in town, they, they were regarded very well. Um, they were paid well and uh, contributed to the economy. In fact, whaling was the town's lifeblood and had been for generations. The Chains Beach Whaling Company ran four vessels in the southern waters, contributing more than $10 million to the local coffers. The 47-metre long steamships operated at the edge of the continental shelf more than 30 nautical miles out to sea. Their target, the majestic sperm whales on their migratory path from the Antarctic. I quite enjoyed going out on the whaling ships uh, and I like the people themselves. They're good sort of Aussie blokes enjoying themselves. A uh, bit of mateship and a bit of fun. But I think the killing bit, I don't think even they like that. There was a bit of hint of sadness every time they they uh, landed a whale. A 40-tonne sperm whale was worth about $5,000. Every part of the animal had to be used. The oil was most valuable, while the rest of the carcass was turned into whale meal to feed pigs. But the tide was turning. I started getting press releases from like, some crew calling the Whale and Dolphin Coalition. They set this uh, August 28, 1977 as World Whale Day and they were promising a uh, protest in Albany. Let the whale live so Kill that it. we may live. Kill it. I reckon you have been supported by a bunch of cranks. I think the local community in Albany ran for cover a bit and some of the issues were really way out. The one that whales might be special, um, maybe have higher, higher intelligence. And the other thing was that the whaling industry really had a bad track record of smashing one species after another to almost extinction. The, the answer from the whaling company was, we're doing all the right things, we're following the rules, uh, who are you to come to town and tell us what to do? In often treacherous conditions, the protesters followed the whaling ships out to sea in inflatable Zodiac boats, zigzagging between the harpoon heads and their targets. They had no hope of winning that battle and they didn't want to. What they wanted to do was to focus global attention on Albany, West Australia and what was happening there. And, and for a few short weeks there, Albany became the global environmental front line in the world. In the end, the government called a judicial inquiry. But on the first day, things took a dramatic twist. No one knew it was coming, and it was the first day of the inquiry. And the uh, judge invited uh, John Saliba, the executive director of the Chains Beach Whaling Company, to get up and make a statement. And he just read out this two page statement, and that was it, it was over. The direct action caused so much disruption that the price of whale oil worldwide plummeted, and with reduced quotas, the industry was no longer viable. In November of 1978, the last whale was harpooned in Australian waters. It marked the end of a long tradition, but it's also regarded as the beginning of the Greenpeace movement in Australia. 31 years on, the Japanese government isn't quite taking the hint the same way. No.